Hello, friend. Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Gardening Zone 6B in New England. It is the middle of June and things are really starting to come together. I got my first strawberries this morning. We have a whole lot to do over the next couple of weeks because if you've been following along, you know that goats are coming soon. Um, so we're working on the goat shed. We just had a coop and a shed shed delivered. We're gonna need to stain those and seal them and get them ready and then build the run for the chickens, build the run for the goats, and then everybody can move in. In the meanwhile, uh, the theme of the garden this year seems to be interplanting like a boss. Uh, I already showed you up at the community garden. We've got a million different things going on in those hay bales, sweet potatoes, beans, cabbages, nasturtiums, something weird happened with the broccoli. But anyway, there's a lot happening there with them. Um, oh, and beets, don't forget the beets. Um, this year in our garden, I've got the tomatoes set up next to uh, the, the peas. And we've got beans coming up with stuff in between them. I'm just, so to continue on with that theme, I have a plan for the sweet potato slips. So two things are going on right now. One is we've hardened off all the sweet potato slips. They are ready to go into the ground. The other is I never got around to planting carrots. So what I'm thinking about is to line this with some landscaping fabric. I'm gonna cut it off the roll and then staple it in. And we'll do carrots on the top. And then on the bottom here is where I will cut some slits and plant in the sweet potatoes. So here we go, come on along. It looks like this shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Um, there is this board in the middle over here, which I'm gonna opt to just leave it in place for now. So I'll probably put the fabric under it. Um, looks like it's gonna take us more than one, I don't know, I could do it this way. No, we're gonna have to go this way and then this way. So we'll need two pieces this size. It's just this thin landscaping fabric. You can pretty much see through it. It'll let the water seep through it and we'll get good drainage while not losing the dirt. So Bill came over with the reciprocating saw and he's gonna take out that beam in the middle that I was like, yo, I'm not gonna try and get that out of there, but it's in the way, so. Yes. <laughs> you wanna try? Uh, sure. Okay, okay so tell you me about come this. out to about here. Mm -hmm. um, that's locked. Okay. That's unlocked. Okay. Immediate start and stop. Okay. And what it is is basically like a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. You want to try and keep the guard flat. Okay. And it's a nice smooth motion down. Okay. And it's going to want to bounce a lot. Don't freak. So can I hold it here? Yeah. Okay. So get this right up against it. There okay. you go. Okay. And then Just do I have to push or anything? You're going to push down a little bit. Okay. Hey, hey. And that's it. All right. And what was that all about? Um, I'm... I'm on a mission to learn how to use some of these tools that we have in the house. So this is the reciprocating saw that we have. 
and I have just made my first cut with it. So proud. How fortunate am I to know and work with so many very capable people. And my capabilities tend towards inside the house, uh, cooking, assembling, starting seeds, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I would like to be more capable outside with building equipment and learning how to use things. Just the other day, I did my first cuts with a table saw and that was pretty, pretty exciting. Um, today, the reciprocating saw and I already knew how to use the staple gun. Um, so let's have at it. The stapling does not need to be pristine. Remember, we're gonna fill this with dirt. So really, this is just about keeping the dirt in and letting the water drain. Um, so nothing in here has to be fancy or perfect. All right, we are lined. And I'm just gonna give this a quick trim, neaten it up a little bit. All right, so we are stapled, hammered down, because they don't always go all the way in, um, and trimmed, so we are ready to fill this box. I'm gonna drag this down to the back. Um, I think I want to install it back in the secondary garden where I've got all the other root vegetables. Luckily, all my dirt and stuff to fill that is in the back, so here we go. Lord of mercy, it is blazing out here. I think I'm gonna get this filled and then come out later when it's cooler to do the actual planting. So here's what I've got for filling. Lord. I want a really rich mix and what I got was some raised bed mix, some lobster compost and some worm castings as well as a little bit of mycorrhizal inoculants. So this should give us a nice rich mix that will do us well for both the sweet potatoes and the carrots. This was so much easier to work on when I was over in the shade putting it together. <laughs> So it's super hot out here. I think I'm going to retreat inside. Um, maybe look at making some seed tape for my carrots and uh, I'll be out in a little while when it cools off and we'll put some stuff in this. So these are the four varieties of carrot I'm gonna make into some carrot tape here. And hopefully these will be fine for planting in with the sweet potatoes. After two miserable harvests of carrots in two years. I'm trying things a little bit different this year. Um, I have attempted to germinate them with a board on top. I have attempted to germinate them with a paper bag on top. Um, I'm gonna try seed tape this year because the best success I've had to date has been transplanting them from the greenhouse. And you're really not supposed to do that to carrots if you want nice big carrots. So we're gonna give this a shot with the seed tape. Um, and it should make things a little easier when we've got them in with the sweet potatoes. So here we go. Straight up, I have never done this before. I've watched a couple of videos and I've read a couple of blogs. So let's see how it goes, okay? <laughs> got some toilet paper out here on top of a towel because coffee table. I have a sprayer bottle and I have my carrot seeds. So first thing I'm gonna do is mist over the surface of the toilet paper. And take our carrot seeds and we're gonna stick them on here two inches apart. 
these seeds are very, very tiny. So hopefully this will be a little easier than trying to plant them in dirt. And now we fold this in half. Okay, so let me give you some in-process notes here um, as I'm finding out. So I don't think it matters if you use one ply or two ply. Um, I just went with what we had upstairs. You figure you're gonna be folding your paper in half. So when I did the first one, I lined up all my carrot seeds in the middle and they're kind of, they're in the seam. So what I'm going back and what I did with the other ones and I'll do with this one is I'm gonna put them in the middle of the top half as I go. Other things I found out. Two inches is a larger space than I thought it was. I'm trying to do the spacing, but I'm not feeling very confident. I'm hoping I don't have to thin these carrots. I hate thinning plants, y'all. I hate thinning plants. I'm like, you deserve to live. I want you to live. You made it out of the seed, you know? Um, just makes me sad. I love volunteers too. That's, that's another one of those things. I will rarely cut down a volunteer. Um, and the other thing that I was thinking about while I was doing these is really after you get these set up, mash it down a little bit mash the paper together. You want it to dry onto itself in such a way that it will let you roll it up. So I'm just giving it a good, a good squish all along. And boom. Okay. So let me show you what I've got going on here. So I've just got them laid out on the coffee table on top of the towel for now. Uh, the seed packets indicate what they are. Once everything's a little more dry, I'll come through with a pen and label these. I'm going to let these cure on the coffee table overnight. There is a fan going in here on low, so that will keep the air circulating. Um, and with any luck, we'll be able to put those into the planter tomorrow morning. Um, so leaving that alone and let's go out and put the sweet potatoes in. You will notice I have also prepared another bed. The reason for that being I have an embarrassment of riches in terms of sweet potato slips. I have four little Murasaki sweet potato slips that I started myself. This was my first attempt at that and it was it went well i'm really happy about it um and those those were slipped off of a sweet potato that was in the basement from last year's harvest that got forgotten about so that was really really cool i also have eight more plants i think from baker creek maybe and I got another 25 at the farm store. I thought I was gonna get 10. So, I got a lot of sweet potatoes. And looking at, let's turn around so you can see this. So you're supposed to plant your sweet potato slips um, 10 to 18 inches apart. We're gonna go on the tight side and I think I can get five plants per side in this guy. And then I think I can get another five in here, which brings us to 15. May be able to fit two more on the short side. It's an experiment, right? It's an experiment. Okay, so this is what they look like right now. I'm hoping they perk up. They're, um, they're turgid, they're not wilty or anything. Um, but they haven't found the sun just yet. I tamped them down on top a little bit to kind of 
push the dirt closer to the roots. Um, I think when I water them in, that's really going to be when they get a good connection. But they're, they're really not bad right now. They're really not bad. So I'm going to do the other side. I may put one more in the front here on the short end. Um, it's always an experiment, right? Okay, so we got five on this side, five on the other side, and one cutie in the front, so 11. And then I got four more in here, so I got 15. And I have 18 left to find homes for. Um, so I'm gonna see how things go over the course of the week, if these take well. I'll have to decide if I want to get a raised bed or give these folks away. Tomorrow, once the seed tape is ready and has dried overnight, we'll bring the carrots over and put those in. So I'll see you in the morning. Hello, good morning. It's tomorrow. Um, my carrot tape is all ready. I've got my four rows of carrots right here. And came out and checked the box this morning. Everything's looking good. Um, my sweet potatoes haven't moved upward yet into the light, but they have caught the light and they're looking nice and perky. And we're doing okay here. Everything's still pretty turgid. Um, I think I may have lost one in the bag, that yellow one over there. But I think we're doing okay and I'm willing to put carrots in on the top. So let's get in on that. Okay, so here's our bed. We have four rows of carrots to put in. So I'm gonna go in about a half inch and make four spaces for these. All right, so that's my golden Uzbek. These are the Kyoto Reds. These are Black Nebula. Last but not least, New Kuroda. Okay, so I've got everybody laid out here and all I'm gonna do is just cover it up. I'm not gonna put much more than a half inch on top of these. I am cautiously optimistic about this. I really want this to work because how cool would it be if it does, right? Um, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Usually it takes carrots a couple of weeks to germinate. Fingers crossed. Thanks for hanging out with me the last couple of days while we built and got some of these sweet potatoes sorted. If you are local and you need sweet potato slips, you should probably hit me up because um, it looks like I'm gonna have some extras. Yay! Uh, but yeah. Here we go, here we go, here we go, go. Thanks again for hanging out. I'll catch you up soon. Take care. I had, I have had two years of awful carrot germination. 